On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, a post-mortem on the $180 million of Ether locked away inside Ethereum smart contracts. So all of that and a small apology from me coming up on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. I'm still here in Birmingham, having hosted Bitbrom yesterday, so I'll be getting the train back home today, but for now I'm recording this in my hotel room from Birmingham. So let's get into this. Back to the parity situation. So Parity have officially posted a blog called A Postmortem on the Parity Multisig Library Self-Destruct System Problem. So it says here, on Monday, November the 6th, 2017, at 2.33 p.m. UTC, a vulnerability in the library smart contract code was deployed as a shared component of all Parity Multisig wallets deployed after July the 20th, 2017, and this vulnerability was found by an anonymous user. Now, if you've never studied software engineering before, let me point out that this is a perfectly common practice. The, the phrase like don't reinvent the wheel applies when developing software just as, it, just as it does everywhere else, right? The classic example I would give is like a calendar system. You know, once someone has written the software code that creates like a 12 month structure with the correct number of days in each month, and then accounts for leap years and all that sort of stuff. What's the point in someone completely rewriting that from scratch? There isn't any point, is there? So when I say write an address book app, I can just import that library of code and then get the calendar functionality in an instant, right? Now that practice is perfectly common. However, the downside is, is if there is a flaw in that shared component, you've got a problem, you know, much wider than that single piece of code because everyone's sharing it. Second thing to point out is that this self-destruct function that someone used to destroy the um, the withdrawal code and whatnot from the Ethereum smart contract, that's also a perfectly legitimate feature. The self-destruct feature is used when you want to retire an old version of a smart contract. Like Ether Delta have done this periodically when upgrading their systems. It's why they remind users to transfer their Ether out of the old smart contract into a new one, so, right? When the Ether Delta exchange upgrades itself, um, you don't want to be trading on the old smart contract, right? So back to parity then. I mentioned this in the last video when I covered this story, but I'll say it again, just to be clear. This problem specifically affects multi-signature wallets created with parity, right? It is unlikely, highly unlikely, that the average user will have any funds in one of these 587 affected wallets, right? These wallets are more likely belonging to ICOs and Ethereum-based applications. In fact, I believe Iconomy have some of their Ether locked inside one of these multi-sig parity wallets. Anyway, some random dude came along and managed to make themselves the owner of one of these shared library components that 587 multi-sig wallets depend on for some of their functionality. And then this guy was able to uh, run the self-destruct on the shared library and thereby cause all 587 wallets that were using that code to be affected. It says here in the parity article, this action blocked funds in 587 wallets, holding a total amount of 513,774.16 ether as well as additional tokens, right? So because you, you can secure or hold uh, Ethereum-based tokens on Ethereum addresses as well. So it wasn't just Ether, but I mean, that's probably the vast, vast majority of the value right there. Now this money is stuck because the code that would allow you to withdraw the Ether from those multi-sig smart contract has been deleted by this self-destruct function. So moving on from there, there's a heading that says, was the wallet library audited? And it does say the original foundation multi-sig wallet 
was created and audited by the Ethereum Foundation's development team, also by Parity Technologies and others in the community. Many users rely on it, and it underwent extensive peer review. This body of code continues to have no known security issues. So that's talking about the original multi-sig wallet that was developed and audited by peer review within the Ethereum community, including the Ethereum Foundation developers, right? So that's that. That's not affected. That's still secure as far as we know. It then says it was restructured by the Parity team into a lightweight stub smart contract, which is deployed to the network every time a wallet is created, together with a much heavier library, which was deployed only once. While there was no formal audit of this additional deployment that Parity made, the contract had received many reviews internally and externally in the context of analysis of the July that was previously uh, exploited in July of 2017, the 19th of July, in fact. So that's what I mentioned in my previous video as well. The most recent bug was the result of a previous fix, which was another security flaw found by somebody else. So this is a, a bug in a, a solution that was meant to fix another bug. So that's kind of like um, a little daisy chain of problems there. So it's clear from this that this bug crept in when Parity made their modifications and they're kind of tactfully saying as much right here. But why didn't anyone spot this, you might ask? Someone did. If we scroll down to the purple section here, it says, in August, a GitHub contributor called 3E Smith recommended a code change that initialized wallet should be called when deployed at the time, which was considered a convenience or a convenience enhancement. So this person was recommending running this initialized wallet function when the smart contract was developed. They say, thus, we committed this proposed enhancement at a future date in time. Now, this is important. They specifically say that they interpreted this as an enhancement, which is why they saw no rush to deploy it. However, someone else was able to initialize the contract themselves, make themselves the owner, and then run the self-destruct on the contract. So that was why that was able to happen. So moving on further down, there's this heading that says, what is Parity Technologies doing to unfreeze the affected funds? They say, we deeply regret the situation and are working hard on several Ethereum improvement proposals or EIPs. There is no timeline for when such an improvement or proposal could be implemented. In terms of a remedy, they have put forward um, some of these changes to the Ethereum protocol that could potentially allow the funds to be unblocked. However, as they say, this is not a quick process because it requires consensus from the community that a change to the Ethereum protocol should happen. So basically, until further notice, that 513,000 Ether is stuck potentially forever. And in a perfect segue into another highly relevant project, I have a mild apology to issue. I put out a video on Friday highlighting two ICOs that I'm currently looking at contributing to, or I was looking at contributing to them at the time. I called that video ICO picks for December because even though this Quantstamp ICO started in November, it was set to run for 30 days through to mid-December. So I thought that was a fair title. Now the Quantstamp ICO opened on Friday the 17th of November at 2 p.m. London time. However, as we can see from this tweet, less than 48 hours later, at 5 past 8 in the morning on Sunday the 19th of November, that was yesterday, Quantstamp tweeted an announcement that the crowd sale was over. And if I flick back to the Quantstamp homepage here, they sold out in two days, raising 87,000 Ether, which is approximately $30 million at today's prices. In fact, the original goal, the hard cap, the maximum amount they could raise was 100,000 Ether, but they sent out an email saying they decided to reduce that to 87,000 Ether 
towards the end of the crowd sale, and then they were going to burn the excess tokens in order to reflect the increasing price of Ether. Now that says a lot about the team and their character. And I will endeavor to highlight these kinds of projects earlier than I did this time round, so it gives more people time to act. Although, in my defense, I did not expect this to sell out so quickly and for them to lower the hard cap like they did. So final note today, I have five new patrons this week to shout out. Again, I must have done something right this week. Five new patrons, starting with Hendry Windham, Danny Jones, we have Barry Wolf, we have James Pluck, and we have Thomas Kanyuch. So thank you all for supporting the Cryptoverse, getting all the bonuses from Cryptoversity, and helping me to boost cryptocurrency adoption. So thank you very much for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. And if you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses that will help you do things like make and save money with Bitcoin, go over to my website, cryptoversity.com, and you can pick from any one of these wonderful courses that I have built with my own fair hands. But that's all for today, guys. I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.